Okay, we got another curvilinear motion example. So we're told for this one that a small bead with a mass of 100 grams slides without friction along a semicircular wire with a radius of 10 centimeter. The velocity of the bead at the position shown is 3.5 meter per second. The magnitude of the normal force in newtons, this is units of newtons, on the bead in this position is most nearly what? So what do we have going on? We have a bead here, and we know this is like the guide, or the rod, the guide rod, in this case, that's the rod, and this is our bead, right? So it's traveling along this direction. And what we have going on is actually something as, it's a curvilinear motion, right? So this is a curvilinear path, so we will have to apply our curvilinear motion equations, equations of motion, using the curvilinear coordinate system. So that's what's going on. So let's write what we're given. We know we have the mass of the bead is given to be 100 grams. And we also have the radius. So the radius is this, right? Let's call it radius here of 10 centimeters. And I already know I need to have this in meters because we're looking at finding newtons. And we know for newtons, you always need meters as the fundamental units. So 10 centimeters is just 0 0.10 meter. You just move the decimal 2 to the left or divide by 100, right? There's 100 centimeters in 1 meter or you just simply do that. So it's going to be 0 0.1 meter for the radius. This is the radius of the curve that's actually provided. So we know here the position, at that position, at this instant there, we have the velocity of the bead. And that equals to 3.5 meter per second. And we finally want to denote what we have to find. We have to find the force, and I'll call it the normal force on the bead. So this is N for normal force on the bead in units of newtons right newtons so n here for the normal force we know we need units of newtons and we just typically write that as just capital n right and that's going to be what we will find so if we go into the solution so for this example we know we're dealing with the curvilinear coordinate system because we have curvilinear motion and the bead in this case is still along that curved path right at the position shown at this instant so we have to use the curvilinear coordinate system. So we cannot use the regular x, y coordinate system. You have to focus on using the curvilinear coordinate system. So for the curvilinear coordinate system, we know we will have the normal direction, the normal axis, which is going to go this way. And it's always going to towards the center of the arc, always towards the center. If the bead was here, it would go towards the center always towards the center and that's going to be positive n n is for normal lowercase n so anything going in that direction is positive always point it positive towards there and what we're going to say is we're going to assume that the direction here this thing is traveling down right so you could maybe like assume it's traveling up right you could that so you would still get the same answer but let's just say this thing is traveling down and what we have is a tangential coordinate system where your a tangential the acceleration in the tangential direction acts right so what we're going to say is it's going to be tangent to the curve right it's tangent to the curve tangent so we know in this case it's going to look something like that and we're going to call this direction positive lowercase t for the tangential direction so what we have going on here, if I actually draw the free body diagram of the bead showing the external forces acting on it, let's say this is my bead, it has a center of gravity, call it G, so that's the center of gravity, and we know, again, we have the normal, which acts towards the center, so this is the normal direction, and I'm going to say this is positive N, right, positive N, and we have the tangential. This is positive T. So we have that going on. And we also have now, we're drawing the free body diagram showing the external forces. Let's look at the forces. We know we have a mass, right? If you have a mass, you have the weight force. So we have the weight acting down. 
so it acts vertically down always the weight acts towards the center of the earth so it just acts vertically down and we know the weight equals mass times gravity right so let's quickly find that the weight equals what's the mass the mass of the bead in this case is 100 grams but in this case we know any time always you're working with metric units you want that weight in kilograms because to get newtons you need kilograms for the mass right to get newtons when you do f equals ma exper experimentally it was proven using kilograms so make sure you have kilograms so you do 100 grams and convert that to kilograms you just divide by a thousand right because we know there's a thousand grams in one kilogram so you divide by a thousand or move the decimal how many to the left it's going to be three to the left right you start here move it three to the left because it's going to be a kilo right kilo is move it three to the left or divide by a thousand so that's going to be 0 0.1 kilogram that's how much we need and that's going to be the mass right that's the mass in kilograms so what we can do is just write 0 0.1 kilograms times the gravity how much is gravity in metric it can be 9.81 right 9.81 meter per second squared then you solve for the weight so for the weight you do that you take 0 0.1 times 9.81 you get 0 0.981 and that's going to be units kilogram time meter per second squared think of it as mass times acceleration f equals ma f is the units of newtons so we know we get newtons right get units of newtons so that's going to be the weight as a force as a force vector so we took care of that we also have other stuff acting on the body and most importantly what's acting on the body that we have to actually find is this normal force on the beat and this normal force anytime you have curvilinear motion anytime you have like a something moving along the curve there's always going to be that centripetal force we call it a centripetal force and picture like you driving along a curve using a car you feel the centripetal force right let's say the beat is here there's a centripetal force the bead is here there's a centripetal force if it's here you have one as well and if it's here we feel a centripetal force the bead feels the centripetal force which is essentially the normal force that centripetal force is going to be normal and it's actually in the normal direction right along that normal direction that we denote it as positive and going that way so we know here that centripetal force is actually all we're solving for and no there's nothing to counteract that right anytime you move along the curve you have this centripetal force and it's just a force due to this natural law right that moving along that curving linear path we develop this force right due to the mass times the acceleration along that normal direction so what we have going on is that centripetal force I'll call it F sub C right we call it the centripetal force and that's actually gonna be the normal force that is that acts on the beat the normal force is the centripetal force so that's all we're solving for is that centripetal force that acts there and we know what we're gonna say is it acts this way right the centripetal force it's always acting towards the center be very consistent with that it always acts towards the center it's the centripetal force which is equal to the normal force that we will find that acts on the beat always acts in the normal direction and towards the center of the curve or the circle so we have that then we also know I think that's it that's all we have acting on the free body diagram and then what we're gonna do in this case is we know we will apply the equations of motion along which direction the normal direction right and we know here that the weight we do not like how this looks it acts strictly vertically down what I'm gonna do is break that up into components I'm gonna break it up into the tangential component and the normal component so what I'll do for the weight is break it up into the tangential component going this way so that's gonna be W tangential right then I'm gonna break it up into the normal component and notice how this one points down right it points in the negative positive is going up that way so this is positive but the weight here in the normal you write that the weight in the normal is going to be negative in this case right and we'll take care of that when we apply the equations of motion so that's going to be negative and now we know that 
when you have these components, you want to have the angle or the small slope triangles. In this case, we're actually provided at an important angle of 30 degrees, right? That angle of 30 degrees is essentially the same as this angle. If you have a vertical here, you can just draw another vertical. It's just that angle as well. And to do this on the side, we know we have the angle of 30 here. If that's 30, you just draw a similar vertical here. And this is just some geometry law, right? That is 30, 30. They're the same, right? So what we can say is this is 30. This angle has to be 30. This angle here is 30 degrees. That angle is 30 degrees. So now we have the angle, and that allows us to break up the components. And the one that I'm going to focus on is this, because I know I want to solve for the normal, which is like the centripetal force that... That, that acts on the beat. So I'm going to just focus on this component. This one is irrelevant in this particular example. But we will say that the normal, the weight component in the normal direction this way is going to be what? The weight vector, the weight force, the total weight force here, and it's going to be cosine of 30. Cosine of 30 degrees. So we have that. That's going to be the weight, right? And we need that along the normal because I want to solve for the norm. Solve for the normal. And just note, this is the free body diagram, right? This is the free body diagram we're used to drawing in physics when you have forces, external forces. But now we, we know in dynamics, you also have a kinetic diagram. Kinetic, or the motion diagram. And in this case, it's just quite simple. It's going to be simple because all you do is draw the bead again. And you have the center of gravity of the object and you also have for the for that diagram we know we have acceleration now we're looking at the kinetic diagram right we're looking at the kinetic effects you know you have mass times acceleration in the tangential direction you know the tangential is going to be positive this way and you also have, know you have in the normal direction just positive this way you have the mass times acceleration in the normal right mass times acceleration in the normal direction so this is what we call a kinetic diagram when we're solving these dynamics examples you have a kinetic diagram and you have the free body diagram showing the forces right so this kinetic diagram just tells you where the acceleration or the inertial forces on the right side of f equals ma are acting you just want to show that direction and denote those so that's just note that you always have the free body diagram for the forces and a kinetic diagram so based on these diagram, now we can move on to applying the equation of motion in what direction? The normal direction. So the normal direction. So what we will say is the following. We will say the forces, some of the forces in the normal direction equals to the mass times acceleration in what direction? In the normal, right? Because we're looking at everything in the normal because we want to solve for the centripetal force. Let's not forget the end goal to find the end, the end in the beat. So it's going to be mass times acceleration in the normal direction. And we're going to say the assumption, anything that points this way is positive in that normal direction. So based on that, we will just account for all the forces on the left side of the equal sign. Let's look at the force free body diagram. We know we have the normal force that acts in the positive. So that's going to be positive N for that. Then what do we have as well? This is not in the normal. This is, right? So that's going to be wn but that's negative because it points this way so it could be negative w negative w cosine of 30 degrees no this term is wn right it goes down so it's going to be negative keep that negative then you do mass times acceleration so the mass in this case is actually given right that's going to be the 0 0.1 always use 0 0.1 for kilograms and the acceleration in the normal direction. So this one's tricky. So if you've never seen that, this an is always going to be your velocity squared divided by your radius of curvature. So that radius of curvature depends and you just, you apply the equations in mathematics or the curvature equations in the mathematics section in the FE handbook. So you take a few derivatives and so on. But in this case, it's quite simple. You just put the radius, right? You put the radius of the curve of this arc or whether it's a curve, an arc, 
it has to be curvilinear. Anything that's curvilinear, we find that radius of curvature, and that radius of curvature is actually just the radius. So what I'm going to say the radius of curvature, which is rho, we, we denote it by rho, rho, it's not the density, it's rho, which is like a radius, when you're looking in dynamics, it's 0 0.1, 0 0.1 meter. So that's all you put here, that 0 0.1, it's the radius of the curve, right? And we call it the radius of curvature. So you put 0 0.1 meter, and the velocity, it, it's the velocity at that instant. That velocity is the velocity of the beat. That's given for this FE type question. It's 3.5 meter per second. So you put 3.5 meter per second squared. Don't forget that squared. I always forget that squared. Always squared. So here, I want to say this equation is in the handbook, right? So you should pause the video, play with the handbook, and find that equation. It's under the a tangential a normal curve linear system. So we have all of this now, and one thing I did not include is the weight. So this weight is actually known, right? That weight is going to be this, right? The total weight force. So 0 0.981 newtons. 0 0.981 newtons. So now we solve for the force N. And if I do that, let me see what I get. So you do 0 0.1 times the 3.5 squared divided by 0 0.1. So that's going to be what we have on the right side. We get 12.25. And you take that plus 0 0.981 cosine of 30. And you get about 13.1. 13.0995, which is about 13.1 newtons. We get an output of newtons, right? Units of newtons. This is kilogram meter, second meter, newtons. Looks good. These are the fundamental units that should give you units of newtons. Newtons. So that's going to be the normal force. So it should be about 13. It should be about 13. So it should be B in this case. And they'll be it. Thank you.